Dyslexia is defined as a specific learning disability in reading that is neurological in origin. By neurological, we mean it's a brain difference in a child that makes learning to read difficult. So neuroscience is the way we have to understand brain differences. And uh, it, for humans, we primarily do that through brain imaging. And aligned with the idea that it's a brain difference, uh, neuroimaging has shown in both children and adults many differences in how children and adults process print and language who struggle with reading. So it's, the evidence is very powerful and compelling that there is a brain difference that underlies dyslexia. So in the long run, if we're going to do something remarkable to help children with dyslexia, understanding the cause of it is an essential step. And that's going to come through neuroscience if it's a brain difference, which it is. So that's the long run. In the short run, uh, parents send their kids to school and t teachers teach reading and that the action occurs in the classroom for most children in terms of reading. And we're not going to have brain scanners in classrooms uh, or neuroscientists roaming around hallways in, in, in elementary schools. So we, in the short one, uh, the contributions I think are twofold. Uh, one is that neuroscience can add to the basic science understanding of what goes on in dyslexia in a way that touches on policies and practices that matter in schools and for children and families. For example, for a long time, people said dyslexia only occurs in children who have a high IQ and a low reading score, and that those are the children who deserve or merit or, or, or would be uh, helped by specific and intensive instruction. Behavioral evidence, intervention evidence, and now recently neuroscience evidence has shown compellingly that dyslexia looks the same in the brain and in the mind regardless of IQ. You can have a low IQ, you can have a high IQ. That brain difference looks just the same. And that really gives us evidence that all of these children should be getting the kind of help that helps children with reading difficulties like dyslexia learn to uh, minimize the consequences of that. So neuroscience can help us have a firm basis for making public policy and practices in the schoolroom uh, that, that really helps children in a, a data-driven or, or, or research-validated way. The last frontier is that sometimes understanding the brain of a child who struggles to read gives us insights that are beyond what we now understand from behavioral or educational measures. For example, uh, my colleague Fumiko Heft and I did a study where we looked at brain images and many behavioral and educational measures in children and then tracked them over the next two and a half years. And we asked what predicts which child will make progress in reading relatively and which ones won't. And the brain measures were much more accurate predictors than any current educational or behavioral measure. So this is a big insight into understanding why some children make progress and some don't. And the reason that's important is those children who don't make progress with current practices deserve a different kind of support. And rather than uh, give them the same kind of educational uh, inputs that we now do and wait for them to fail, if we knew up front which child is going to not respond to current educational practices, we could try something different. Uh, and so the brain measures at the moment predict which child is in that group who will struggle better than current educational and testing measures. That could change in the future. People are constantly developing new measures. But at the moment, those brain measures are more predictive of long-term outcomes and then give us a better hint as to which child needs a different kind of help.